What's up, everybody? As always, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to ContractFortune.com. That way you can be made aware of any educational opportunities that are about to be made available to you. Um, I'm actually about to teach a class on freight brokering, probably the, I was going to do it the first week of June, but I want to give it a little bit more time for people to find out about it and, um, you know, to, to let it, to let it be known and market a little bit, but, uh, it'll, it'll probably be the third week of June and then two weeks later, cause it's only going to be a two week course with this. Um, two weeks later, I'll do the one on government contracting, even though there is a webinar on the contractfortune.com website that you can purchase right now. It's in English and in Spanish. It's in English and in Spanish. But um, we'll put an a, a ad like a, you know, like a flyer or an ad on the contract fortune page so that you can you know keep up with what the classes will be for the next couple of weeks. And I'll probably do them all summer. And I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I'll be, the, the price, I brought the price down substantially and you'll be able to see that when you go to the site. Now, one of my patron supporters called me uh, Monday or Tuesday and asked me a question that I didn't really think about. It's something that is kind of um, routine to me now. But when I first started, it was a problem that I had, too. He had a problem with knowing the difference between what is a unit price and what is a stop auto bid. OK, let me let me break that down. If you have a if you have a solicitation, you see a solicitation for a box of pencils, right? Let's make this easy. Um, the pencils, it's 10 pencils in a box, 10 pencils in a box. Each pencil is one dollar. When you read the solicitation, a lot of times, not all the time, you have to be very uh, you have to pay very close attention to detail when it comes to um, going through a solicitation. But a lot of times they'll ask you for what is the unit price? So if we have 10 pencils, and each pencil is a dollar. The unit price on those pencils is a dollar. And the total unit price is $10, of course. But what, what we want to do is give the unit price, which is $1. So when you plug the unit price in, <clears throat> excuse me, when you plug the unit price in for $1, that's what you're going to plug in for your, now, the pencil is a dollar, right? You're getting it for a dollar. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll do like, how to bid later and how to, you know, what the, what the bid price wise later. But if you know that the pencils are a dollar from your vendor, you're going to want to charge about a dollar, fifty dollars, seventy five for the sake of this conversation. It probably would be different, but around dollar, fifty dollars, seventy five. So you can make your profit. That's your profit on top of that. So your initial opening bid is going to be a dollar seventy five. That's your unit price. Your unit price for these 10 pencils is a dollar and seventy five cents. All right. Now you have your stop auto bid. Everything is like eBay in reverse. Um, you have your stop auto bid. So rather than go back and forth, if you're bidding against somebody, typing in a dollar seventy five, dollar seventy, dollar sixty five, you put your stop auto bid price in, which is the lowest number that you will go to. Again, we will talk about this in the class, and I'll teach you this in the class. But you put in the lowest number that you are willing to take. So we put a dollar seventy five on those pencils, right? And they wanted, let's just say they're gonna put, they want, I don't know, ten ten pencils in a box. Uh, 100 units. So I don't know how many boxes that would be, but 100 units. So 100 pencils. That's $100. So if you put 25 cents on that, do whatever the math is. I'm not, I don't like, I'm not getting ready to add that up because my math is horrible. But whatever that price is, that's what your profit will be 25 cents on each pencil. So your stop auto bid price is going to be a dollar twenty-five. Your initial opening bid was a dollar seventy-five. Remember, you're charging for each pencil, not for all ten pencils. Even though they asked you for a hundred pencils, you're only they say what is each unit? How much is each uh, pencil, each unit going to cost? So, as you bid. You put all your stuff in, $1.75, your stop auto bids, $1.25. Now, this is for like several marketplaces. Um, when you bid on BetaSam or when you bid on Fed, um, you know, Fed, Fed Biz Ops, what is now BetaSam, um, it's different now. It's different now. Like, if, especially if you're submitting a proposal, like the RF, there's a difference between an RFP and an RFQ. And I'll explain that in the class. But, um, with ones that I'm thinking of in my mind right now, the different prime contractor sites I'm thinking right now. Um, they'll, what you do is when you plug the price in, you go through everything, fill out all the paperwork, read everything you, you, um, need to read and you 
hit submit bid. When you hit submit bid, once you hit submit bid, it'll total it all up. So when I first started, I would put a price in, right? And I wasn't, it wasn't price registering me that they were saying, yo, you know, we want um, uh, 100 pencils. I'm thinking they want 100 boxes. So I'm charging, you know, $20 a box per pencil. And so therefore, when the, the total price would come up, it would be some astronomical price, so much so that when I first started, the a lot of the contract, prime contractor websites would call me back like, is this really the price that you meant to put in? So be very aware of the difference between a unit and sometimes they'll ask you for a case. They'll, sometimes they'll ask you for what a box is. But I'll give you another example real quick during the pandemic and, you know, just to show you what type of stuff is out there contract wise. They were asking for nitro gloves, nitro gloves. I don't know. N-I-T-R-I-L-E. I don't know how to properly pronounce it. Sue me later. But nitro gloves, right? They were asking for 500,000 gloves. How much are you charging per glove? Not per pair. 500,000 gloves equals 250,000 pairs. So you got to you had to total up what all that was going to be. So it sounds crazy because you're like, why are they charging per glove? But the government is paying for each individual item, not because it's a pair. One glove is one piece of equipment. The other glove is the other piece of equipment. You have to be aware of that. It will throw you for a loop when you first get started. So, um, I thought that was a really good question. I didn't think about it until, you know, the, 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 you know, person told me what it was that was happening and he was having trouble with it and he was trying to figure it out. But, um, as always, they got an 800 number if it really gets too technical and too hard for you and they'll help you out with it. So, as always, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to Contract Fortune. I highly recommend. Look, I understand times are tough. I understand that the pandemic is wreaking havoc on the economy and there are a lot of folks that are, hurting in terms of being out of work. <clears throat> so I reduced the price significantly, significantly. I still got to charge something, but um, I've reduced the price significantly. So I highly recommend you take the course. With what's going on right now, you're going to have to evolve. You're going to have to evolve in what this is in terms of uh, business and, 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 you know, finding opportunities for yourself. So don't lose hope. Don't Take a second to, 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 to breathe in and breathe out and, and, you know, get your thoughts together because we talked about this. We talked about this weeks ago that it was going to keep going and elevate to a point where it's getting right now. And we're still not over. The roller coaster ride is still not over. The, the, the survivors are going to be the ones who evolve. My truck drivers, I know that you just got those CDLs. You thought that you were going to work for this company or that company for some years. Some of you don't have desires to be a freight broker. Um, some of you have desires to be a... Uh, uh, a owner operator. I highly recommend if you have desires to be an owner operator that you learn how to freight broker. The quicker you learn how to take over the entire operation and become a broker carrier, the quicker you can eliminate somebody taking five to three hundred dollars out of your check every time you you, you cash out your uh, your settlement. So um, again, I don't want to keep rambling on. I'm you know I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. Stay safe. And uh, as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next week and we'll talk about I'll, I'll do a video about sales. So like and subscribe, subscribe to Contract Fortune. Be safe.